So I think we can start. I have the green flag. So um, I'm very pleased to be here with you to give you this uh, short presentation about the road to industrialization of our hydrogen solution at Plasticomium. So first, I will uh, introduce myself. So Christian Mogi, I'm a marketing manager for hydrogen solutions at Plasticomium. So our, our purpose uh, at Plasticomium is, uh, can be described uh, around f four, uh, four words. The first one is driving. We believe that success comes from our people, from our internal people that develop new products. And the second one is mobility. So we are fully involved in the mobility applications. We develop different kind of products for a wide variety of applications. We develop new products because we have to target new offers, uh, so zero emission vehicles especially, and uh, in order to meet the future market needs, we have to develop uh, greener and smarter and safer mobility applications. And the last word is generation, in order to complete our sentence, driving a new generation of mobility because uh, at uh, Plasticomium, we consider that uh, we have to take care about people and we feel responsible for the, for the planet and we have to, to develop uh, products that have a positive impact for future generations. So at Plasticomium, we, have a strong, uh, we are a strong player in the mobility sector and you have here some, some figures. And uh, as you can see, we are focusing on main uh, five divisions. So uh, intelligent exterior systems, clean energy systems, HBPO, new energies, focusing on hydrogen solutions, and lighting. On top of that, we recently announced the creation of a Plasticomium software house in order to support the development of our new products. So we have the capability today to build a complete range of energy management systems in order to serve the different type of powertrain, so including battery electric vehicles and fuel cell electric vehicles. So at Plasticomium, and especially within the new energies divisions, we have the capability to propose the complete range of systems that is required for fuel cell electric vehicles starting from the battery pack, uh, so a high, high power or high voltage battery pack, the hydrogen storage system, fuel cell stack according to our joint venture with Erin Kingler uh, EKPO, and the capability to pro propose also fuel cell module. So we have a complete overview and it's more or less a unique proposal uh, in a tier one supplier like, uh, like Plasticomium to propose a complete set of uh, components for fuel cell electric vehicles. So our proposal uh, can be suitable for a wide variety of uh, mobility applications, so for light duty vehicles, heavy duty vehicles, and uh, today, uh, and, uh, in this presentation, I will not uh, detail all the products we can propose in our portfolio, but uh, don't hesitate to visit us at our booth. Uh, we have a lot of people present in order to uh, answer to all of your questions and uh, to, um, to see more information about fuel cell modules and high pressure vessels or high pressure uh, systems. So just to give you a flavor of what we are able to do, I will uh, just uh, have a look on this uh, project done uh, within the Cleaner Hydrogen Partnership that uh, take into account some of our products. So we have uh, an example of uh, a truck, a 40 ton uh, truck that is equipped with uh, our fuel cell module. So it's a 50 kilowatt net power fuel cell module uh, connected together in order to increase the, the power. And we implement also uh, an hydrogen storage system at uh, 350 bars in order to, to have the capability to have 40 kilograms of hydrogen on board. 
In order to have some more details, I propose to, to move to the, a short video presented by uh, one of my colleagues in Austria, Werner Rumpel. My name is Werner Rumpel and I'm the project manager of the FCM50 and the H2 Hall project and I work for Plastic Omnion New Energies in Wales. Being the project manager of the H2 Hall project means to be the face to the H2 Hall consortium and the lead customer VDL. The H2 Hall project is a great opportunity for Plastic Omnion to be an actor of the mobility transformation towards zero emission. To meet the power demands of the truck, we had to install four modules. In total, three trucks will be deployed. Today, we are here for commissioning the first truck with a prototype, and this prototype will soon be uh, replaced by a pre-series. After the homologation is completed for this truck, it will be deployed at Kolrud, who is the end customer of VDL. The technology has been tested, and now the fuel cells are integrated in the fuel cell module, which is perfectly aligned with our uh, requirements and uh, very good cooperation, especially with Plastic Omnium in Welch. That is for the fuel cell modules. And if you look to the tank set, the tank set uh, is uh, developed in uh, Brussels. So uh, there we have the 350 bar set and also there the communication is very direct and very nearby. With the help of this project, h 2 Hall, we could get uh, VDL on board as a lead customer. VDL is a great customer and sparing partner with a long-term experience in bringing a fuel cell-powered applications into the market. Their understanding of the technology and the expertise of our very skilled development team was key to develop such a module as you can see over there within three years. So as you can see, we already have some prototype uh, on the road. And now we have to move from the prototype scale to the industrial scale. And uh, this is the main purpose of this presentation. So um, today we already have a strong presence uh, around the world within our uh, new energy divisions according to different uh, plans uh, and pilot lines. So we have already seven uh, plants and pilot plants already in place. We have uh, eight R&D centers uh, available, uh, covered by more or less 500 uh, people today involved in this, uh, in this area. So in order to, to enlarge and to, to increase and to accelerate the deployment of our hydrogen solutions, we were awarded by uh, um, the European Commission's uh, according to some uh, specific project called IPSAI, and we have uh, three different projects awarded. One dedicated uh, for the development of fuel cell stack, so according to our uh, GVA EKPO, so it's uh, led by the, the Germany in this case. And we have two additional uh, projects, one in Austria in order to cover the development of fuel cell system uh, and industrialization of the fuel cell system uh, with high performance fuel cell module. And the last one uh, is a, a French project in order to develop and then industrialize what we call long and thin pressure vessels uh, for hydrogen mobility. So just to give you uh, some uh, more insight about uh, the, the different projects. So in Austria, the aim is to enlarge the capability to produce a uh, large volume of fuel cell modules. And it's not only to enlarge the capability uh, productions, but it's also uh, to meet the requirement of EV duty vehicles. So as you probably know, there are strong requirements in terms of durability, in terms of power density, and cost uh, targets that we need to, to meet in order to enlarge the volumes uh, of vehicles on the road and uh, also to enlarge the, the production capability uh, within, uh, within plastic omnium. Relative to the high pressure vessels, we are exactly in the same trend 
And uh, from now, where we have only a single production center in Belgium, we will have uh, in the horizon of 24, 26, more or less uh, five plants that will be capable to produce in total more than 170,000 HPV per year. So it's a huge number, and uh, you can understand easily that we are moving to industrial scale. I will focus especially on the campaign side uh, to, to explain you that we, we move very uh, fast in order to, to be capable to produce large number of HPV and uh, hydrogen storage system. So you have some, uh, some figures here about this uh, future plant that will open in 2025. So it's a large surface area, huge investment in terms of building and equipment in order to, to succeed. So this, uh, this plant will uh, serve especially uh, three main customers, as you can see, Hyvia, Stellantis, and Opium. So for Hyvia and Stellantis, you have the, the capability to see some vehicles in this, uh, in this fair today. Another aspect of the French IPSE is to also develop what we call uh, long and seen HPV, uh, it means floor module in order to integrate easily in the chassis of the vehicle the hydrogen storage system. For example, to replace more or less uh, the battery pack in a battery electric vehicle by an hydrogen storage system to fit exactly in the same shape and probably also using the same uh, mounting uh, systems. So in this case, we will move from the actual design where you use different uh, hydrogen storage system uh, you, uh, you put together, and you will move to the future design with only uh, a single, I would say, single uh, safety measures in order to limit the number of equipment you have to put on each vessel. So it's very important to decrease the cost and to increase your uh, production capabilities in this case. So wha what we are doing now is to industrialize all our hydrogen solutions in order to cover this wide range of uh, applications. So from passenger cars to light commercial vehicles, trucks, buses, and we also consider uh, off-highway uh, applications and trains. So thanks a lot uh, for, for joining to this session. And uh, if we have time, uh, I can take some questions. Or in any case, uh, we are present uh, on our booth uh, during the two days. And just uh, to mention, uh, we are also hiring some people. So if you are interested, we have our human resources available uh, today and tomorrow at the recruitment corner. So thanks a lot. a little bit more about of highway projects that you are working on? Yes, today we consider um, for this, uh, um, for this uh, kind of applications to identify what will be the uh, right uh, type of vehicle we can target. For example, port uh, vehicles for maritime port or uh, airport. Hi, thanks a lot. Um, I wanted to ask you about the pressure vessel. I mean, it's more than just a skin. Uh, do you also work in the integration of the sensors, the ECU, which control the pressure vessel? Is it part of the basic Ormian product range? Yes, in fact, we didn't propose only the vessels. We pro can propose also the complete uh, hydrogen storage system, clearly. At which pressure do you foresee uh, the, in the future the storage of hydrogen in the light vehicles or in the, uh, EV, EV, in the EV duty vehicles? 
Um, today for um, passenger cars or light commercial vehicles, clearly we are moving to 700 bars. This is uh, a constraint uh, to have uh, the good amount of hydrogen within the, within the vehicle and you have not enough place to, to fit uh, if you use only a 350. You will not have um, a good uh, differences between a BEV and an, and an FTV in this case. For EV duty applications, uh, we start uh, with 350 bars, clearly, but uh, today, most of the, the requirement today move also to, to 700. Uh, do you see any future for uh, hypercritical uh, storage? For? Hi hypercritical, so, uh, or supercritical. Oh. To, today we are not dealing with that uh, because we consider it's uh, far for, from, uh, from now, to, uh, clearly. And um, it's not only development of uh, onboard system, but it's a complete ecosystem to develop in this case. So quite, quite complex. I understand. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I had a question regarding like high temperature, high ambient temperature, like since the temperature is rising. Is it something like that is in your radar in terms of like, do you have any issue with like being high temperature and also for us, it's for example, utilization in the Middle East, where you can reach like 45 degrees. Is it something that is? Yeah, you, you mean a high temperature for the fuel cell system? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, technically, yeah. but uh, the ambient yeah. temperature, as ambient temperature. Yeah, cl clearly, clearly it's a key, key topic for the, the future development of uh, our system or the fuel cell stack. So we need to, to increase the working temperature of the, the fuel cell uh, stack itself. So uh, it's part of the future development of uh, the technology of war stacks, clearly. Yeah, because you, if you have a high temperature in the high environment, you will have derating on the, on the system and uh, you will not be able to cover all the power requirements in this case, clearly. It's a huge challenge for the, for the next five to, to eight years, I would say. Hello, thanks for the presentation. Uh, which geographies do you see uh, being more advanced in uh, using this technology in the next years? Uh, clearly, one of the major regions will be in, uh, in Asia. Uh, there is a strong development of the, the infrastructure and uh, this is the key. Uh, if you have the infrastructure, you will have vehicles. In another case, it will not be uh, possible. So. Today, uh, we know that uh, in Europe, there is uh, uh, the regulation a uh, fear in order to develop the, the infrastructure. But uh, I think we, we need to go faster in order to improve the, the number of vehicles if we consider mobility uh, as, a, as a key aspect uh, for, the, for the deployment of the hydrogen technologies. No other questions? Thank you for the presentation. You talk about uh, the fact that you are developing some stacks with EKPO, and I think I understood that meanwhile you are also offering some system, plastic on your malone. Did I get it right? Or? In fact, we integrate fuel cell stack coming from EKPO in our fuel cell modules. Clearly. Don't hesitate to visit us. We have um, a fuel cell system that you can see inside all the BOP components and the fuel cell stack itself. So it will be more clear for you. So thanks a lot. I think it's the end of the, the presentation. Thank you. Have a good day.